Hi guys, welcome to another short video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill and here's another video on some of my stock. Now I've got three separate lots to show you in this video. Um, a real nice piece of early uh, bronze, um, a set of three porcelain figurines and some amazing royalty letters. So before I get um, to started doing that, I thought I'd just give you a bit of an update. Um, I've had a few people asking basically how things are going, they're watching the films, they're liking the buys and just asking for general updates really on how the selling side is going. Um, it's really hard to explain um, but a lot, I'm not doing a lot online at the moment. Most of my trade, uh, my deals now are going out to trade. I'm turning over fast, um, it's coming in, I'm putting a small profit on it and it's going back out. If it comes in for stupid money then I'm putting a decent profit on it obviously. Uh, but I'm not actually doing a lot at the moment online. I've still got my eBay shop running and I've got my website where I'm putting the better pieces on there. It's like the Lord's Prayer um, the other day that you saw was spectacular. Straight onto the website. Um, so, although I'm getting sales online, it's not enough to justify really saying to you, well, I'm taking this, this and this online and it's supporting me because it's not. I'm actually doing a lot of my trade at the moment at the markets um, and privately. I've got quite a lot of trade dealers I buy for and that's why I can afford to buy so much stock because it comes in and it's gone like that. Really doesn't stay with me long guys. Uh, my office is a bit of a mess. I got stock everywhere in a minute, I really have. And I'm almost finished with the um, the photograph studio. I bought the extra three lights this week. Um, so I'm now going to frame up the supports for the lights. Wire them in because I can do the wiring myself. Wire it all into an extension lead and then I'll have them all switched on. And my photograph studio will be done then by the end of the week. And what I'll do, I'll show you uh, when it's done. I'll clean the office up a bit because at the moment I'm way behind on what I need to be doing. And I'll give you a look at the office, how I've kept it tidy <laughs> once I've cleaned it. And you can have a look at the uh, photograph studio. Anyway. Um... Just as a little update, I haven't found a courier yet to do the um, larger items and certainly not for overseas. I have listed the um, Willie's Wine Bar lithograph. I've put that on my website. I've listed the Lord's Prayer on my website and a few of the other larger items have gone on there. Oh, excuse me. But what I've done, I've done UK sale only. Now, if somebody buys them in England or Wales or whatever, what I've decided to do, because of the price of the items, you know, they're all up in the hundreds anyway, I thought I'll just put it in the car, if I can't find a courier, and I'll deliver them, deliver them personally, and I'll make it into a buying trip. I'll buy all the way up, deliver the item, maybe stay the night somewhere, and drive back a different route and do the shops again, so I'll turn it into a two-day adventure of buying. I used to do that anyway, I loved it. I sold um, a fairground carousel once, come off a carnival. You know, it was a homemade one that had been made um, and I sold that, I think it was about five, six hundred pounds but it was too big for any curry and it filled the back of an estate so I took it and I done that as a two day event uh, excuse me uh, you know where I drove up doing the charity shops and antique centres and that on the way up and the same on the way back and it really paid off so that's what I've decided to do with these larger pieces now the ones that I can't really ship at the moment um, until I find a courier. Now I'm going to do a video where I sit down and look for couriers this week um, and see what the options are. But before I get into that, I'm going to show you uh, today's stock. Now, this one hasn't come into me recent. This is one I bought and I kept for myself. I'm not sure if I've already shown you in an earlier video. I don't think I have because it was packed away. Um, Anyway, beautiful thing. Here we have a panel set on brass and inlaid solid bronze. Now we have a very early hunting scene. You all in bronze you can see the man with the hunting on and the dogs, everything. Absolutely spectacular. 
Maker's Mark to the underneath. The Maker's Mark is struggling to read it. Wenthal. There's something before Wenthal and Co. Maybe LG. I don't know. I haven't got my eyeglass on me. A second. It's in the other room. So, but anyway, there's a Maker's Mark there. I kept this one because I absolutely adored it and it's been a paperweight. But I did have it packed away. I don't think I've shown you before. I paid, I think it was a tenner for it. Um, and I bought it for myself. It's absolutely spectacular. It's 19th century. And the colour on the bronze and the casting is so crisp. Really is a beautiful piece. Now, you have that as a paperweight. Originally it would have come out of maybe a clock garniture or maybe it was mounted in a slab of marble. Or, I'm not sure. It's definitely come out of something. It was the pan it was the main panel in something. It was the decoration. Now I know I've had pieces like this in clocks before now. Um, Victorian clocks. So that may have been the panel in the clock, I'm not sure. But either way, it makes an absolute exquisite paperweight. Now if you love Victorian bronze, then you'll appreciate the quality of the casting. I'm going to give you another look in just a second, right, because you can see the stag running up the hill under the trees there. You've got dogs right behind him. The crispness of the detail. You can still see all the muscles in the horses. Everything. You have a proper look at that if it focuses in. It really is spectacular. If you're on a, cam a computer, freeze frame and zoom in, guys. It really is absolutely spectacular. A really nice piece of bronze. Is the uh, back, as I said, it's mounted on brass. But you wouldn't dis you will, you wouldn't have it mounted on bronze as well when it's going to be hidden. Bronze was so expensive, so the only piece they wanted in bronze was the panel that was going to be displayed. Really rate that. That's a nice piece. So that was the first piece. Next piece I got. Um, I don't know if you remember. I bought that Ernst Bone uh, porcelain figurine the other day. Um, of a lawyer or barrister, it was an official gentleman anyway. Um, and I bought that out of Merthyr Tidville. Um, but the same place, the, the, well, how can I say, the gentleman who sells in Merthyr Tidville also sells to me privately. It's the same man. He prices his stuff up, I have a look through it, what I don't want he takes to Merthyr, but he also adds a few little extras in to make sure I go to the boot sale. So, um, from our own spawn figure come three more figures. Now he charged me £5 each for these figures guys. And I'm going to give you a little look at them now. So, there's the first. Now I'm not going to tell you who made them just yet. I'm going to wait a minute and see if you can actually see who made them. Now all I got for a mark is this. Which isn't a lot when you really think of it. It's not very clear. It's not the best mark in the world. There's the uh, gentleman. So that's the first. Again, I'd say some sort of official gentleman. He got his wig on. He's got his folder or his papers. So it may be official again. And we got another. So I don't know, maybe judges or something like that. Or barristers. This one here has lost the end of the thumb. The finger's still there, but he's lost a tiny tip of the thumb. Other than that, they're in perfect condition, the three of them. The mark on this one is there. Now, for you porcelain experts, you probably know who's made these already. But for those of you who don't, here's the final piece. We have a little pirate. Well, it looks like a pirate anyway. He's got his cane and his pirate heart and his patch over his eyes, so it looks like a pirate to me. Now I'll give you a clue, they date to the 30s, late, mid to late 30s. All three have a slight variation on the mark. This one was the clearest mark, believe it or not, to read. So I'll give you another look at that again. So. Did you get it? Right, so starting at the top, you have FX impressed. Then we have the number 843. 
Then you have a crown over a W with what looks like a C, but it's not. It's a C with the tiniest of tail turning into a G. And that crown over the W, C slash G, is William Goebel. So these figures are all by William Goebel from the 1930s. Now Goebel is Hamel. Um, and most of you will know it as MJ Hamill with all them little figurines of little boys and little girls. Well, these were the earlier pieces. And to be totally honest with you, they're quite scarce. You don't see them very often and you certainly don't see this crown over the CW mark. I haven't seen them before. It took me a little bit of research to actually uh, find out who they were. I say a bit of research, but 20 minutes. Um, but we have a set of three. Now, as I've already told you, there's slight bit of damage to the one finger here but online this one figure alone and before anybody says you need to go off sold prices there aren't any I'm well aware of that I, to have an exact value you need to know what someone's paid I know um, but you can get an idea of what other people are asking as well they want £60 for that one piece that's the asking price now I know you can ask anything online and what I tend to do to value my pieces is gauge it between what I can find sold privately on eBay, what people are asking for on eBay, what people are asking for on Google, what people have sold them for in auction and I tend to get an average. Um, but these early global figures are not that easy to find uh, values on. But I would say they're worth about £30 a figure. Now I paid £5 a figure. So you do the math, that's 15 into 90. It's good sense, guys. And some nice figures. My final piece, I'm going to cut off the camera now and I'm going to focus in on it for you to see tidy. It is really quite something. Um, can't read the land right on the letters yet. I'm going to really have to sit down and really work hard trying to de decipher the handwriting. Really is, well, it's not the best handwriting in the world, let's put it that way. Um, but I'll show you the uh, the last piece, guys, and it is something. Hope you enjoy seeing it. Okay, guys, so final piece we have here is an oak framed set of letters and early photographs. Now I'm going to come across, take a look at this crest, it is absolutely spectacular, all done in high relief and if we come across here we have another beautiful crest here and then a little note that reads original of three letters from HRH Princess of Wales and HRH Princess Mary Duchess of York received by Miss Nellie Bowler in acknowledgement of her services sent to them by her. So what we have here is, I'm not sure if this would be Nellie Bola coming down this side, not 100%. Um, we have a letter here from York House, St. James's Palace, headed paper, dated July the 16th, 1893. And then we have the little letter here, which is to be honest with you, I can read some of the words, but not all of it. I'm really going to have to, um, well, what can I say? Spend a bit of time to try and figure out what it all reads. Again, we have headed paper, White Lodge, Richmond Park, 29th of February, 1892. And we have a nice handwritten letter again. I'm going to hold on these letters for a bit, guys, for you to read them if you think you can read them. And the final letter is actually on paper from Compton Palace X Eastbourne, sorry. Compton Palace Eastbourne, dated February 12th, 19, uh, 1892. This one is a bit easier to read. It's Second line is to express the Princess of Wales' best thoughts to Miss Bola for the verses that she kindly sent. Um, Miss somebody is... 
I can't read it all. But basically, this lady has sent verses to these um, Princess Mary and Princess of Wales and that um, for her services and that. And these are the responses, obviously. Now, this panel in here that you see around the photographs and the letters is a slice of oak. So somebody's carved a very thin piece of oak and that is, they've made the mount out of the oak. This frame is all carved oak, so it's all period, 1890s, and it's original glass too. So that is quite a rare little piece. So there's no information on the back. So there we have it guys. What a beautiful find. Now this came in from the same source as the Lord's Prayer did a couple of days ago. And for the same sort of money, I paid £25 for this, as you see it standing. Um, what do I think it's worth? Certainly a couple of hundred pounds. Potentially I could take each of these, if I wanted, the photograph and the letter out, reframe them, and get, you know, 30 to £50 pound a piece. Um, and there's three of them, that's without the top two. You know, just in the components, there's a couple of hundred pounds, but as a item as you see a standing very decorative piece would look amazing anyway two to three hundred shouldn't really be a problem there we have it three beautiful porcelain figures by uh, William Goble um, 1930s through to early 40s um, that beautiful piece of bronze now I realise that's only a part of an item um, but if you've got something to fit a slab of bronze like that in, wow, really add a bit of value. But in all, in all honesty, as a paperweight, I love it. It's got to be worth £40, £45 just to be used as a paperweight. Hunting collectibles now really do pull money. People, hunting is banned in the UK now, but people still go on hunts. They go on mock hunts where they pretend they're hunting because um, they still love the experience but they're not allowed to actually hunt the foxes that is a beautiful cast a freeze frame if you like of a hunting scene from mid-victorian time out of everything I actually prefer the bronze hunting plaque not into hunting but I prefer the bronze hunting plaque just for the casting and the bronze and the metalwork the letters are what they are they're stock to me but they're amazing Lovely bit of history there, um, and I love the way it's been presented. Good age to it too, so yeah, what can I say? Porcelain and the um, letters are going up for sale, and the bronze will stay with me. Unless I offer it up, I haven't decided yet. But it's been with me for quite a while now, um, and looks lovely as a paperweight. Right, if I decide to offer it out, it's on the website, this will go, it won't go anywhere less. Uh, I wouldn't go on to eBay, and I won't go on a boot sale, it'll go on the website, and it'll still, it certainly be up for £45-50. So, there we are, it, guys. Three individual lots, but three seriously good lots. I'm certainly happy with them all. Um, what could I say to give you a little tip with the porcelain? Don't look at the mark. It's the only way I can do it. Um, you're not going to know every mark out there. The best tip I can give you is look at how it's made. Does it look old? Does it look handmade? Does it look quality? Does it look interesting? Does it look like it has something about it? Yes? Then buy it and worry about who made it later. I didn't have a clue when I bought them. I thought they were another mark by that Ernst Bourne because they come from the same family. Um, and they turned out they're gullible. Just as good. I'm certainly happy with that. Um, but you got to buy with your gut feeling. Somebody um, texted me um, yesterday actually and said he's just starting out and what tips can I give him as a total newbie? Uh, my answer to him was, plain and simple, first and foremost buy cheap because you're learning you're going to make a lot of mistakes if you're buying cheap 
you're not losing a lot of money. You'll always get a few pound back for it on a car boot sale, no matter what it is. So if you're only paying a few pounds for it, then um, you can sell it back on. Then I said to him, pick a subject, any subject you want, children glass, silver, gold, porcelain, doesn't matter, coins, pick a subject. Learn that subject till you got that subject at enough of a level that you're comfortable to go out and say, right, let's say fragments say porcelain. Now you go out and you say, right, well I don't know all the makers, and I'm not going to know all the makers, but i got enough knowledge now to know what's rubbish or what's worth speculating on. Then move on to the next subject. All you need in this business is a general knowledge. You don't need to be an expert. <coughs> That's your experts there, all these books. As long as you have a good general knowledge, you come home, you do your research at home. Trust me, not everybody who buys everything at the car boot sale, antique fair, auction house, or anything else knows 100% what they're buying all the time. Everybody takes punts or guesswork. We handle a lot of stock, so we tend to know what is a bit better than normal. So, learn your one subject, move on, learn enough on the next subject, move on, and over the years, and as you handle stuff, the knowledge will slowly come to you. Buy as many books as you can, and use do as much research as you can. But another thing I said to him was, basically, look at what the other dealers are selling. Just because it's a dealer store, don't just walk past it. Stop at the store, pick stuff up, handle it, look at what it is, talk to the dealer. The dealer will be very helpful because he's trying to sell to you. Now granted, he's going to get frustrated if you go to him week after week, asking him questions, taking up his time and not buying nothing. So now and again, buy some off him. Even if it's a cheap item, it doesn't matter. Um, that way they feel they've been paid for their knowledge and you can always sell that item back on. But go to dealers, handle stuff, talk to them, look at the prices they got. Even if you don't want to talk to them, just go look at their store, look at what they're selling. And you'd be surprised how much you'll pick up. And just don't be afraid to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes, you're going to lose money. But if you want to go to college, you want to go to university, it costs you a lot of money to learn. Education isn't free, so it's not free in antiques either. You're going to make mistakes and you're going to lose money, guys. I have got probably a thousand pieces of broken Chinese porcelain now that have cost me between a pound and fifteen pound, twenty pound to buy. They're worthless. Every single one of them is worthless. But I'm paying for the education because as I'm trying to read the books when I get time, I'm actually referring back to the broken bits of porcelain. And do I care if it's a brand new modern piece of porcelain? No. Because I can then sit down with an eyeglass, a jeweler's loop, and I compare the old bowl with the new bowl. You've got to pay to be educated. Now, as much as in you go to university, you're paying a, an expert to teach you. In this job, you pay yourself and you make mistakes. The only difference is, if you buy cheap, you can sell it back on, you can keep the cost of your education down really cheap. First one I'd certainly do, guys. I would certainly recommend it. Anyway, I'm going to leave it by there. Um, I'm going to have a few days this week working on my business plan. That's slowly starting to take shape. Um, once I finally finish that, now in a few months, um, I've actually found a couple of properties I'm considering. Once I've finished my business plan, I will publish the video on that, but that's going to be a few months away yet. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully you've enjoyed uh, this little video. Hopefully you've enjoyed seeing the letters and the figures and the, the paperweight. If you have, I would appreciate a like and a share. Um, I'm up to about 450 sub subscribers now. Um, and what can I say? Thank you for the uh, support. That's all I can say. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. And there's a little bell for notifications to be notified of my videos. You'll find me on Facebook on Antiques Arena. I have a page on the group. You'll find me on eBay. Run a search on eBay for Antiques Arena Clearance. And I have my own website, antiquesarena.com, where the better pieces end up, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.